Hello people, you're welcome to my channel. My name is Magic. In this video, I'll be taking you guys through levels in Photoshop. You know, the panel they call levels in Photoshop. Amazing tool. You know, this tool is used to adjust brightness, contrast, and tones in an image, you know, and it's perfect for overcast images. I, I use it to finish my pictures when I'm done with my retouching and everything is clean and fine tools. I just use my levels, you know, make everything pop. And that's what I want to show you guys in this video. Let's go. Okay, so we are right here in Photoshop, Adobe Photoshop 2021. Um, this is my interface. I have my history, my actions, my properties, and my info over here. So let's go to the adjustment layer. I have my adjustment layer over here, and I, come, I can come down here to, to click and get my adjustment. But let's just stay here. So this is the brightness. The second one is the levels. So let me click on my levels. So this is how it looks like. You know, so I'm going to show you different ways to use levels to make your image pop it's beautiful it's like my favorite tool in photoshop levels and curves this is what i use a lot in photoshop so let me show you some of the ways you can use it as starters the fastest and easiest way to use levels you know is to click on this auto panel over here but before we get into that i want to show you the things that levels entails you know when it comes to levels you can deal with your rgb separately just like you use the tone curve in Lightroom. So if you click over here, you can see the red, the green, and the blues. So when you click on the red, it is going to deal with just the red color slider specifically. For example, if I pull this to any direction, it's going to deal with only red. It's not going to touch any other part of your images, of your image, I mean. You know, if you click over here, come to greens, and I move the slider, you're going to see that it's going to look all different. It's dealing with the greens only. I don't advise you to deal with all this though, especially as a beginner. You know, the same for blue. You can see how cold is looking by moving the slider. And you can come to this other side, drag it in. And you know, it gives you different kind of funny results that I honestly don't like. So let's go back to RGB. You know, now I'm going to show you different ways to use levels. Like I said earlier, it helps with your brightness and your contrast. And it also makes your image pop. That means it gives you very strong, realistic, and mature contrast. Now, the first thing you can do if you really don't want to stress yourself manually adjusting the levels, you can just click on the auto button over here. Just click like that. That's all. And it does the work for you. Even though I don't, I don't use it because you can't trust these things to give you what you actually want. So I rarely use it, but I'm just showing you how it works. So this is before and after it's not bad i'm not i don't like it so if you feel you don't want to stress yourself you just want it or you want the levels panel to determine what it can determine on its own probably but i for one i don't like it so let me delete the levels panel let me recreate it over again so we are back here so let me show you another fast way this one is very very easy and fast and it's actually very very efficient you know very efficient way you can come over here. We have these three tools that looks like pencil over here. It looks like marker. It's called eyedropper tool. You know, this eyedropper tool is used to select color range or to select a tone in the image for automatic results. Now, in the levels panel here, we have three eyedropper tools. You know, the first one is to select the black point. It's even written there. Sample in image to set black point is to select the black point. The middle one is to select the gray point. That's like the neutral point of the image. Why the lowest one is to select the white point. Now, this works like magic. Let me just show you how it works quickly. What I can do, if I'm using the eyedropper to apply levels to an image, I just come to the middle. I start with the middle, which is the um, gray point, neutral point. I click on it. I look at the image. I look for the most neutral part of the image that looks very gray. Let's say somewhere around here. This place looks a bit gray. Let me just come down here at least. And I click on it. I've selected it. You know, I can now come to my, let's say my white point, which is this eyedropper tool over here. I click on it. I'm going to look for the brightest part of my image. If I can't, if I need help, I can just click on the option key and I come to my right hand slider and pull it down. As I pull it down, you can see that there are some white areas of the image showing. Those are the brightest part of the picture. I clicked on my Alt key, then I went to the slider on the right hand side of the levels, and I clicked and I pulled it down. So these areas are the brightest areas. I'll just click on any of that. 
so this is it over here so i'm clicking now then i click on the last eyedropper tool which is for the black point so let me click on that black point now i can repeat the same thing i click on the alt button i come to the left part that's the left slider on levels i click on it i pull it in you can see those dark areas those dark areas are the areas you can see out of this flush white look so i can just click on any area of my choice this area is really dark over here so let me click on that area voila it has done the work for you. just by clicking i don't have to do any other thing just by clicking let me show you before and after can you see it's giving you a very very realistic and mature result as if you don't want to do anything but i for one i like to go manual i do it from scratch so i'm going to delete this level scores over again then i reopen it again so this is my flow what i do is and let me let me say it this way what you need to understand is the left hand slider this is this stands for the black points the right hand slider stands for the white point why this middle slider sl stands for the gray point that's the mid-tones now what i do when i want to go manual with my levels is that i just come to my right hand slider we start from the white point i click and i drag inside the image it brightens my image automatically as you can see of course i won't go this far but i just want to show you how it works you know so what i do is i pull it in and i try to stop where the spike starts as you can see this histogram there's a spike so what i do is I, when i drag my slider i stop where the spike starts so let me show you what i mean i drag the spike starts somewhere around here so that's why i usually tend to stop so that i don't overblow overblow my image and I have a lot of overcast and wash areas you understand so i stop somewhere around here i come to my black area i click the, the spike already starts somewhere around the beginning, so I won't overdrag it. So just a tiny bit. Just a tiny bit. Just a tiny bit, and that's all. Let me show you before and after. This is this is my style. I like the fact that I can brighten, because if I don't do it this way, and I choose, I, I just turned off the levels layer, I want to use regular brightness to brighten the image, so you guys will see the difference of what I'm talking about. So let me come to my adjustment layer, click on brightness and contrast, then I'm brightening my image. Can you see what's happening? Oh, I had contrast. You can see how burnt is looking. It doesn't give you very realistic result. That's the essence of all these levels and curves that is designed in Photoshop. It gives you more control. So let me de delete this brightness layer. Let me turn on my levels. Can you see how it looks? The colors are intact. Even the cutting behind the lady is not overwashed. Everything is on point. You know, so even if I, if I want to go further, I can choose to go further, come to my bright slider, and I pull it much more in. I think I'd rather stop somewhere around there so it doesn't look too contrasty. The moment you over push these things, they get so burnt and too contrasty, so the dark areas are too dark, the bright areas are too bright, and you won't really like the result. So I like to just leave it simple. So this is before, and this is after. You know, like I said earlier, you can do the same thing for individual colors. So anytime I want to touch individual colors, I deal only with reds. Red works a lot with skin. So I don't usually touch my greens or my blue, except I'm, I'm working on an outdoor image that has a lot of trees or grass or flowers, and I want to touch my greens a bit. But in this scenario, I'll just stick to the red. I'll stick to the red. You know, I can come here, pull it in a bit. I just want it to be a little bit poppy. You know, and when you pull down your red, you are adding a lot of purple. Can you, if you can see, you know. So I don't like to overdo it. I just take a tiny bit. This one I can, I can just punch it in a tiny bit, just to give it that red feel. And I can even choose to use my greens. You know, use my greens. If I pull the green out, it's going to give me a little bit of yellow. So let me pull in my greens. So it's adding yellow, as you can see. This is a lot of of it, but I won't go far. When you are dealing with individual colors, let me say this: when you are dealing with individual colors try not to over push your sliders just go just slight those little little subtle changes can make a huge difference in your image so don't overdo it just a little subtle change you know let me come back to my red let me take this back a bit <laughs> so this is before and after you can see if the color looks i just color graded the image you know so this is how levels work it's a beautiful tool it's a very very beautiful tool that you can use to create dramatic results like this you know so I hope with this video, you have a basic understanding of how levels work. And I have to say this, you have to use this tool in your edits, if you are a Photoshop user. You need to use levels 
for your edits because levels give you deeper control you know when it comes to your contrast it gives you realistic contrast when you see my images and you see the way they pop you see the way the dark areas are dark the bright areas are bright and everything is bright and at the same time it's not looking overblown my key tool is levels you know i use levels a lot when i'm done with my images i just pull in those sliders from the left hand side i pull it in a bit from the right hand side i pull it in a bit and i get that pop so i advise you guys to use this tool today i hope you enjoyed the video see you some other time cheers